What's up, everyone? So in this video, we're going to break down ESPN's top 10 NBA players of all time list. Now, recently, ESPN has been talking about their top 74 players in league history. And just today, they broke down their top 10 players of all time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the list, break down the players, give you guys my take, and I'm going to tell you right now that I don't completely agree with the list. So I'm going to adjust the list and tell you who I think is the top 10 players of all time. Before we get started, please subscribe to more hoops and like the video. It really helps my channel out. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. So who did they choose as number one? At number one, they chose none other than Michael Jordan. This isn't really a controversial pick, and I really won't spend too much time talking about Jordan because most NBA fans are going to agree that Jordan is the greatest of all time. His career stats are amazing. His accolades are amazing. Everything's amazing about him. Career, 30 points per game, six boards a game, five assists a game, two steals per game. He's got a flawless finals record. He went to the finals six times and won all of them. He's 6-0 in the finals. He won the Defensive Player of the Year award. He won 10 scoring titles. Jordan just had an incredible career, and there really isn't too many knocks against him. I don't have a problem with Jordan being ranked at number one all time. At number two, ESPN shows LeBron James. And this is where it probably gets a bit controversial. The funny thing about LeBron is that you got LeBron fans, LeBron, and then you also got LeBron haters. But to me, honestly, I really don't have a problem with LeBron being ranked number two overall. And here's why. LeBron James is arguably the greatest all-around talent of all time. For his career, LeBron James averaged 27 points, seven boards, seven assists a game, and two steals a game. LeBron James has just has this incredible ability to dominate the game at literally every facet. Scoring, rebounding, assisting, defense. He can guard every position, shot blocking. LeBron James is just elite at almost everything. And to me, it would really push LeBron over the edge because at first I didn't have him this high. But those finals runs in Cleveland show me, nah, there's no way. LeBron James is definitely second all time. When LeBron James took those teams in Cleveland to the finals, LeBron was clearly the best player in all those finals runs. Even though he didn't win all the time, he was putting up incredible numbers, otherworldly numbers. The first year, they go to the finals and they lose to Golden State. LeBron James averages about 30 points per game, 35 points per game, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. They lose, but the fact that LeBron James was able to take scrubs like J.R. Smith and Shumper to six games against Golden State and put their backs to the wall just tells you all you need to know about his greatness. The year that they win, LeBron James was the only player in league history to leave both teams in all statistical categories in the finals. In 2018, he carries a garbage Cleveland team with trash players that had no business being in the finals to the finals. LeBron James is just the ultimate advantage of the playoff series. He elevates his teammates, like, at an incredible level. So, to me, I don't have a problem with LeBron James at number two all time. He's just an incredible, incredible all-around talent. At number three, they went with Kareem. So, Kareem is slept on, and Kareem doesn't get too much talk in the GOAT debate, but he has just as good a case as anyone. Kareem, for his career, 25 points, 11 boards, three assists, and about three blocks a game. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is just one of the most unstoppable players in league history. That sky hook just couldn't be stopped. At seven foot two with long ass arms, you're not stopping that sky hook. And he had deep range. Kareem was knocking down that sky hook from the baseline. The guy has six MVPs, the most in league history, six rings. Hell, he's the all-time scoring leader. I don't have a problem with Kareem being ranked number third in the top three. In fact, the number three, top three players, I don't have a problem. Let's continue to see what they have at number four. So at number four, this is where I get a little bit iffy with them, and this is where it probably gets a little bit controversial. So Bill Russell, funny thing about Bill Russell is that if the game was just based off rings, this comparison – there's no question that Bill Russell would be the GOAT. The guy went to the finals 13 times. Yes, 13. He has 11 rings. 
Nobody comes close. And if you understand this game, you realize that Bill Russell was just an incredible talent. His numbers, 15 points, 22 boards, four assists a game. He was an incredible defensive player. He could guard any position, and he was an incredible shot blocker. They didn't count blocks back then, but if they did, it would have easily have been over five a game. He could score the ball. He was a legit point center back then. In his prime, he was getting about five, six-plus assists a game. He could put the ball on the floor. He could run fast breaks, and he could find guys. Bill Russell the type of player where he would still dominate today. But the only knock against Bill Russell is that he played in a less competitive era. So because of that, I do think he's a little bit overrated, and I wouldn't have him as high as four, but I definitely put him in the top ten. Next, they chose none other than Magic Johnson, leader of the Showtime Lakers. And Magic Johnson was an all-time great player. For his career, he put up 20 points per game, seven boards, 11 assists, and two steals. And Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson was just a triple-double threat. He was a great all-around talent. If his scoring, rebounding, and assisting, and Magic Johnson is arguably the greatest playmaker ever. His court vision at that six foot nine size was just incredible. Magic Johnson was just able to find guys and get guys easy shots all the time. And he ran the fast break just so excellently. Magic Johnson, I don't have a problem with him being at number five overall. Not to mention he also won five championships. Magic Johnson to me is definitely at number five. You could put him at number six or number four and you could talk me into that. But Magic Johnson is definitely up there. At number six, they went with Will Chamberlain. <laughs> And the funny thing about Wilt Chamberlain is that if the game was just based off numbers, you can't put anyone <laughs> other than Wilt. Wilt averaged 30 points per game, 23, point, 23 boards a game, four assists, and it didn't count blocks, but his blocks would have been really high too. Wilt numbers were just ridiculous, and he owned so many records. Highest scoring average, he had 50 points per game. Yes, 50. 100 points in a game. He has a ridiculous amount of records that I'm not going to go all into. But the only knock against, well, one of the knocks against Wilt, similar to Bill Russell, is that he played in a less competitive era. So even though he's ranked number six, I would, in my list, what you're going to see, I rank Wilt Chamberlain a little bit less than that. Also, Wilt Chamberlain, for all his numbers, he only has two rings, and he was an incredible scorer. But I do think that Wilt Chamberlain's, unwillingness to pass at times really hurt his teams but he's definitely top 10 at number seven is none other than larry legend now larry bird is really slept on because bird is one of the best all-around players of all time look at those numbers 24 points 10 boards six assists 1.7 steals per game the fact that Bird was averaging 10 rebounds a game while playing next to some of the best bigs of all time and Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish, who are great rebounds in their own right, is just incredibly impressive. Larry Bird's game was just so smooth. His jump shot was crazy. His playmaking is crazy. He was incredibly efficient. Larry Bird is one of the rare players in league history that's in the 50-40-90 club. Larry Bird was shooting 40% from three in an era when the three-point line wasn't even much of a thing as it is now. Larry Bird is easily top 10 all time. And to me, I, would, I wouldn't have a problem with someone ranking him higher than number seven. And in fact, I actually do have him ranked higher. Larry Bird definitely has slept on it. To me, him and Magic are interchangeable. I wouldn't have a problem with someone ranking Larry Bird ahead of Magic or just one slot ahead of him. At number eight, ESPN chose to go with Tim Duncan. Now, some younger fans may not know as much about Tim Duncan, and he doesn't have as big a fan base as some of these other guys, but Tim Duncan has a really, really good resume. For his career, he averaged 24 – For I mean, I'm sorry. For his career, he averaged 19 points, 11 boards, three assists, and two blocks a game. Really good all-around numbers. And he won five championships. Tim Duncan just couldn't be stopped in his prime. They call him the big fundamental for a reason. He had a crazy touchdown low. He had the hook shot. He had the drop step. He had the bank shot. And he was a great player on defense, too. And he was a really great passer. 
So Tim Duncan, I have no problem with him being in the top 10. And really, I think he's somewhere in the number seven to number 10 range. Recently, NBA TV was playing some old footage of Tim Duncan when the Spurs were playing the Lakers back in the day. And he was going toe-to-toe with Kobe and Shaq. Tim Duncan's greatness is a little bit slept on because he had a quiet and boring personality, but he's definitely up there. At number nine, ESPN chose to go with the great Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace to Kobe, by the way, and everybody else who died in that plane crash. Now, this is where it gets um, pretty controversial (laughs) because a lot of people are going to think that Kobe Bryant is being underrated. And I actually would agree that Kobe Bryant is underrated, and I would have him higher than number nine. So, first career, he averaged 25, 5, and 5. Kobe Bryant is just, his resume is just incredible. Five chips, 18-time All-Star, four for the all-time scoring list. Just an incredible player on both ends of the court, on defense, along with being an offensive juggernaut. But, now some people are going to get pissed off when I say this. Kobe Bryant, to me, is overrated by his diehard fans. Not by most NBA fans, but just the Kobe fans. I've literally heard Kobe fans say that Kobe is the GOAT, the greatest player of all time. Here's the thing. While Kobe Bryant is unquestionably one of the top 10 players of all time and one of the greatest players of all time, when you look at the numbers, his numbers clearly indicate that he's a worse player than both Jordan and LeBron. I mean, both of Jordan and LeBron scored more points, more efficient, better playmakers. I mean, it's just obvious. Um, a lot of times Kobe fans will say that he did win five rings, which is true, but you can't forget the fact that on three of those rings, Kobe was playing second fiddle to Shaq. Now, I'm not saying that Shaq carried Kobe, but Shaq was clearly the better player on all three of those rings. Shaq won all finals MVPs. Shaq put up astronomical numbers in those finals runs. So to me, Kobe is definitely an all-time great and to me, he's ranked, he should be ranked higher than number nine, in my opinion. But I'm not putting him as the GOAT. Um, and, and lastly, at number 10, they decide to go with Shaq Diesel. So Shaq, what's funny about Shaq is that Shaq probably underachieved in his career. Yet he's 10th of all time, which really just goes to show his greatness. For his career, Shaq averaged 24, 11, and 2. And out of everyone, Shaq is probably the most unstoppable player of all time. In terms of, there is nothing you can do to stop this man from having his way. He's seven foot one and damn near 300 pounds. In fact, over 300 pounds in his prime. Shaq's arsenal wasn't even that advanced. He dominated, he even said it himself, I dominated with two moves, the hook shot and the drop step. But because he's so big and strong, you cannot stop Shaq from getting that favorable inside position. And with that good touch on his hook shots and his drop steps, Shaq was just unstoppable. In the 90s, he was cooking elite defensive centers like David Robinson. The only knock against Shaq is that because he didn't take his body seriously and because he couldn't hit free throws, Shaquille O'Neal probably underachieved. He could have been a serious GOAT candidate had he been a little bit more serious, but he's definitely up there in the top 10. So, after looking at who ESPN ranks as their top 10, this is my personal GOAT list. So, I still have the same 10 players, but I adjusted it. At number one, two, and three, I have Jordan, LeBron, Kareem. I agree with those top three, but then I changed it. At four, I have Magic. And then at five, I have Bird. At number six, I put Shaquille O'Neal. Seven, Kobe and Duncan. I think Kobe and Duncan are pretty interchangeable but I decided to go with Kobe over Duncan because he has better numbers. And Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain at 9 and 10. So I decided to push Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain down despite their numbers and rings. And while they did put up those crazy numbers, like I said, they played in a less competitive era. So to me, I think that's a knock against them. But that's my top 10 list if I was to do it myself. So I disagree with with what ESPN put. So in the comment section, go ahead. Do you agree with my list? Do you disagree with my list? Let me know. Thanks for watching.